Take so long. I just stopped for a minute. Damn you, you're always stopping and dreaming. Your mom needs the water. I'm bringing it. Won't you just leave me alone? Don't talk back to me, you little. Oh. I'm going to bed. Hey, Pop. Can I fix up that old truck for myself? I could get some parts. No. Well, it wouldn't cost nothing. You want to fix trucks? Go get a job in a garage. How am I going to get there? Walk. Hitchhike. The hell's the difference? Nobody's going to hire you anyway. Go going to bed. You need some more water or anything? No. I think I'll go into town. Your pa won't like it. Oh, he'll be asleep in a little while. He don't have to know. There just ain't nothing to do. I just want to walk around and talk to somebody. What's he want from me, anyhow? There ain't nothing to do. Mom? You don't have to tell him. I'll be back early. I'll go crazy if I don't get out of here and do something. It's like being a dog in a cage. I know. Go. Thank you, Mom. I'll be back early. That ought to get you through tonight. Yeah, it might do it. Well, are your engines just going to sit there warming the seats all night, or are you going to help pay the light bill? Come on. Is your old man going to let you fix up that truck? He wouldn't let me fix nothing. He thinks I'm an idiot. He went after me a damn belt again today. You got any money? I got a dime less than you got, which is nothing. Are you gonna take a ride? Where'd you get gas? I stole off a farm out east. Old man Miller's place. Man, they catch you, they're gonna throw you under the jail. They don't shoot you first. What'd you expect me to do? Walk? 
Well, you might as well drop me off near home. I don't want to just ride around doing nothing. All right, saddle up. Let's go, then. What the hell's this? What's it look like? Where'd you get it? This my paws? Boy, he's gonna skin you alive. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's gonna skin me. You crazy. Hey, we got enough gas to get to Brazel County and back. So what? Nobody knows us up there. You can get us a little gas station or a little store. Get some money and then come out on back. In fact, we could be back in time to get us a couple of them burgers, huh? I don't know about that now. Come on, Joe. What you got to lose? Nothing. All we want is a couple of oranges. It's late and I want to get home. Well, that's all we want is a couple of oranges, though. You engines live around here someplace? Uh, no, sir. We're just we're just passing through. Yeah, well, I didn't think I'd seen you around here before. I guess I can give you a couple of oranges. Yeah, and throw in a bunch of them grapes, too. You sure you boys can pay for this? Yeah, we got money. Okay, four we're going to do you? Uh, yes, sir, and don't forget them grapes. Hands up, mister. Why, you miserable little pecker! Oh, come on, Alvin! Come on! What? Come on! Come on, Larry! Get in this truck! Get in the truck! Come on! It is the order and judgment of this court. Clarence Carnes, that you be incarcerated in the state penitentiary for the rest of your natural life.
Nothing else can hold you, Carnes. Alcatraz will. Nobody else has escaped, and neither will you. Strip. Take the rest of your clothes off, put it out in front of you. You're going to be searched inside now. And, and if anybody's taken anything into Alcatraz, you'll go straight to the hall. And he wishes in hell. Now, this is the rock. You're here because you're useless and worthless, both in society and in the prison system. And here you'll stay until the day you die, or you get paroled. There's no escape. Swim in the current will drown you, or the sharks will eat you. Smart cons don't even try. You lay one finger on any of these guards, and it's the gas chamber. Now you're allowed one visitor a month, if you follow the rules, two showers a week, one haircut a month. And that's all the privileges you'll ever get on the rock. when you get through.
Seaside Hotel. Who are you? Haskell. Fred Haskell. What's your name? Clarence Carnes. Where are you from, Clarence? People call me Joe. Leavenworth. Should have turned down the invitation. You don't look old enough to be in the rock. Eighteen is old enough. Congratulations, kid. You set a record, but it ain't gonna do you any good here. I'll bust you into the hole for scratching your nose. What else? Anything. You walk into the chow line with your collar unbuttoned. Smart mouth the screws. Get caught with anything from a piece of candy to a piece of string. Heads up. That's the way it goes, Joe. The screws, they're always on the prowl, just like they're doing time and can't stand it. Third tier, 23 prisoners. C block, third tier, 23 prisoners. C 
block second tier, 21 prisoners. C block second tier, 21 prisoners. Okay, Lieutenant. Rack them out for breakfast. B block first tier, C block first tier. Open the cells. You're tough enough to break the rules around here, Carnes. Just remember this. I'm double tough. Double tough, Ripplin. Kid, you want to order any magazines? Or are they free? <laughs> Nothing in here is free, except the time you spent in the hole. You're a feisty kid. You can order books from the library catalog. Life? No. Just 99 years. I don't know what you did, kid, and I don't care. This is the last stop on the hardest line in the prison system. They don't send you here unless you're the worst. And that's how they treat you. You try to fight that, you'll end up dead or crazy. Yeah. I could figure that out. Good. Because there's a lot of old cons in here who'll help you all they can if you're a solid guy. If you're not, you'll get eaten alive. You an Indian? Yeah. Jack Tell. You know the woods pretty good? Yeah, I know. Let me ask you something. How do you get a job around this joint? Like working in the laundry? <laughs> if you think the industrial area is the path to the water, forget it. No, I just don't want to sit around here counting hairs. Yeah. Well, just tell the man what you want. But, uh, don't look eager. They'll figure saying no is good for you. Hey. Yeah. Nope. Here's your book. Good. I need it. Yeah. 
You ain't the only con in this joint. Is it this guy for shock, man? New kid down the line. Just out of the hole. An Indian who knows the woods. He's got guts. Stand up kid. Here's your look. Thanks. Anything? Soon. Yep. Here we go. Here, Sam. Have a magazine. From Kretzer. Cage, Moncrief. Shockley's gone nuts again. Come over and cover me. Okay, I'm coming. It's Shockley again. All quiet. That guy belongs in a bug house. You said it. Pitch and crow.
Okay. Joe, you're back in population. Yeah, this morning. I'll talk to you out in the yard. So? That guy over there. See a wolf, too? Nah, that's Kretzer. He's a solid kind. He got out of the lockup the same day you did. After five years for trying to break out. I like the looks of that engine. He's got moxie. And he knows the woods. You told me that already. But you get him to help you polish up Broadway. I want him to get some more yard time. Take the second chair. Hi, Pop. How are you? Okay, I'm okay. How are you? Okay. How about Mom, sister? Yeah, okay. That's good. said you was coming out to San Francisco to get some work. Did you find anything? Yeah, at the shipyard. Well, that's great. That's really great. You look great, Pop. Guess nothing else has changed, huh? No. Nothing. Pop? Why did you come out here? This is such a rotten place to come to. Sure. I wanted to see you. In this place? Did you have to come out here and see me like this? You're still my son. I just wanted to.
I don't know. Guys dying for something to do. In a week, some condo want to buy this job from me. Let me up. How's the new helper doing, Coy? Oh, just fine, sir. Of course, there ain't anybody can polish old Broadway like uh, Bernie Coy here. By the way, Carnes, there's a new opening at the laundry. Unless Bernie needs help. Oh, always somebody to help. All right, you fall out with the rest of the laundry crew in the morning. I'll talk to Mr. Legacy. And remember, Carnes, working is a privilege at Alcatraz. That's the way you handle it on the rock, Joe. You ever iron clothes? No. Well, uh, you'll learn. You start on sorting. This is your bench. Jack, show him what to do. We'll sort first. Yes, sir. We'll get. These shirts here is from the Marine Base of Presidio. They like them start stiffness aboard. This here is a laundry mark. You got to look for the laundry mark on everything and stack it together. Get one of your shirts over there and we'll go over here. Watch out for Dumpy. They say he's meaner than a snake. We got jackrabbits in Oklahoma eat snakes for breakfast.
we do that? They're going nuts. He does it once a month, just to let off steam. Well, how do we play? I'm gonna try handball. Until the screws give us back the equipment. Don't look now, but there's a hole in the concrete near your right hand. That's your mailbox. If you need to get in touch with somebody, write a note on a piece of cigarette paper. Put it in there and cover it up with sand. I'll check it every time I get in the yard. You can do the same. Okay. Thanks. I'm Kretzer, a friend of Bernie Coyce. Huh? Sit down. <laughs> I've been in lockup the last five years. But Bernie says you're selling. Wow, that's a long time. What'd you do? Damn near busted out of here one day. One statue. <laughs> Bad luck. We got a grinding wheel that wouldn't cut through steel. <laughs> Next time we're gonna make it. Huh? Bernie thinks we need you for the woods when we cross the bay and head north for Canada. That's one thing I know. When? Right away. Hmm, before this place kills us. A Thursday when McCreef is in the gun cage. Let's take a walk. Quit your job with the laundry. You know, look awful funny if you're staying in your cell every Thursday. What's the plan? Well, Bernie figured out how to take the, uh, the gun cage and the door guards. We take the uh, armory next. We knock off the tower guards. And we storm the boat. There'll be five or six of us leading the way. Thirty or forty more will come along once we get the guns. <laughs> well, can you picture the cops of Frisco trying to stop thirty cons with Tommy guns? Can that really work? Hell yes. If not, the Spanish tunnels are under all of this. And there's lots of ways out. Are you with us? I'd try to get out of here with the devil, if he asked me. He just did. And anybody trying to stop us go straight to hell. Are you gonna drop for messages? You were just sitting on it.
pretty quiet, sir. Mm-hmm. There you go. Thank you. I hold it. What's taking you so long, Hubbard? Oh, well, I'd rather do this right the first time than have you make me do it all over again, sir. Now you're getting smart. Hurry it up. Oh, yes, sir. Legacy, more set here. Get out with your Gun gallery, Moncrief. Okay, I can't even hear him out here. It's Shockley again. I have to cover Corwin. You gotta get that lunatic out of here and put him in a hospital. You drag him in and close the door, but don't lock it. Yeah, gotcha. Tired of you yelling. Yeah. Sick and tired of you screaming. out of sight of the people. All right. Marv, go down to the corner of C in case anybody comes through. Now and ever.
me. You get the guy out of here. Give me my. sleep a while and you clean up the mess. Next time, don't waste your breath on him. Had a fight like that in a long time. Did you kill him? I think so. Good. Quick. Throw the pistol. We're gonna get caught within D block. Now you go through and cover us. Miller in the cell house. Maybe he's shaking down the kitchen crew. Try Corwin in D block. You keep checking Miller. They must have heard Shockley screaming all the way to the warden's office. What the hell are you doing, Flash? Get out of my way. Come here with Miller. Come on, screw. Let's take a little walk. Bernie, get everything we can use up there. Good. Joe, tuck him in full. You didn't hurt. Keep your mouth shut. I ain't got time to talk. There's a lot of great stuff up here. Gas bombs, gas masks, clubs, everything. Oh, hell, good. Throw it all down and get all the keys. Gotcha. Coming down, Bernie. Come on, Bernie, with that stuff, huh? On down. We gotta get the guys out of D block. Get us close. Here, bring the keys. All of them. Hey, Chris! 
fucking church. Move the desk. So we need to help the people. I can't, I can't keep your eye on Miller. All right, but keep your ears to the main gate. There's so much damn noise, you can hear it from here. Now, we're going to get Shockley, we're going to get Thompson, and we're going to get Whitey Franklin out of deep lock. Now, look, if you hear anything, you come get us quick, Joe. You come with me, just to keep an eye on Cohen while we work the locks. We're here, eh, we? You two go down the end of City Street and keep your eyes open. Come on, Joe, we gotta get Whitey out. Uh, we get this open, Whitey. They always open it electrically. All right, don't worry. We gotta get you out of here. You're coming over the wall with us. I'm with you, Joe. Just get the store open. All right. Come on. Hey, Zor, you're going, and be careful of that thing. You think there's an alarm built in there? Oh, he pulls the wrong switch, all hell breaks loose. <laughs> what he was after? Mark, drag him back to 403. What about Whitey? Look, we're getting out of here. And yeah, we're not setting off an alarm for anybody. I thought he was your pal. He's the best lucky key man in the joint. He stays here. Let anybody out who wants out. Come on. Come on, you free. I'm not going anywhere. Come on, man, let's go. Guys like them always do things the hard way, don't they? They'll be dead before the sun goes down. A lot of other poor ignorant fools with them. Maybe you too, son. But you're in this cell for life. You're an Indian, aren't you? I know how you feel about being free. But let me tell you something. There's one thing worse than doing life, and that's no life at all. Think about that. Come on, let's go! Go, everybody out! Any promises you can't deliver. I keep moving, screw. Joe, keep an eye on him. We gotta go through these keys. Mark. Is it all right if I untie Miller? I mean, he's he's not going anywhere. Yeah, go ahead. Like you said, he ain't going nowhere.
here. Damn it! There's a phone down there. Watch it. Let's find that key. Come on. All right, get back to your places. What's going on upstairs, Mr. Dunsley? All right, everybody into the storage room. Let's go. Let's go. Move it. Armory. Trouble in the cell house. What? I can't hear you. Trouble in the cell house. Serious? What? Repeat that. Captain, uh, I just got this crazy call. I, I couldn't understand it. Something about trouble in the cell house. Who was it? I don't know. They hung up before I could find out. I've been calling all over, and I'm not getting any answers. Uh, keep trying. I'll go see what's up. this captain come on now take that monkey suit off looks just about my size everything away from them. Uh, maybe, but one of them's got to have it. Where's the key? Where's the key to 107? It's not here, Kretzer. You've already searched us. Now give me that gun and, and then stop this crazy... Shut shit. up! You're going to die unless I get that key. And you're all going to end up in the gas chamber unless you put down those weapons and get back to your cells. Kill him, Kretzer, kill him! You've always been rotten every corner of this joint. You're making a big mistake, Kretzer. Now give me that gun. Uh, Joe! Legison's always been a good guy in the kitchen, huh? We're finished unless we get that key. Hey, wait a minute, Kretzer. Where would you hide a key if you had it in a cell and there was a shakedown? We get a couple of sheets, we cover Weinhold and a couple of the others, and we cover ourselves. They will know who to shoot at. But first, let me knock off a couple of hacks in the towers. All right, watch them.
Get down to the corner. Get that yard door open. We got all the hostages we need. Yeah. Joe, watch them. There's got to be trouble in the cell house. Six or eight officers are missing. All right, inform the warden. Tell him I'm going to take a look. Give me a gas, Billy. Convicts loose in the main cell house. Probably holding some of our guards as hostages if they haven't been murdered yet. All right. Now sound the alarm. I'll get there as fast as I can. And call the Bureau of Prisons and the FBI. Sound the alarm. run out. We ain't going no place. Look, with all those hostages you got, uh, maybe the warden make a deal. Nobody's gonna be dealing with us no more. You understand what I'm saying? Maybe you ought to give up. I'm not gonna sniff gas. I'm going out in style, and I'm taking as many of them with me as I can. I'm with you. I only wish that I had a gun. Oh, I don't know. With no more guns, I don't think that the, uh... Shut up! Get out of here. There's no room for anybody who's all right. Hey, Kurtz, how many bullets you got? Yeah, how many we got? Okay, we got three clips for the pistol, and I got about 40 for the rifle. Got the butcher knife, clubs, and gas masks. And we're going to be needing these masks when they start coming after us. Oh, it's all down the sewer. Come on. I want to get some of those guards on the tower. Come on, Marv. Hey, Coyne, what about them Spanish tunnels? Kurtz said he knowed the way down to the dock. The only tunnels in here, kid, is that door. <laughs> Come on, Marv. Warden, we have to mount an assault immediately. You all right, Miller? Yes, sir. Oh, good. All right, sit down, sit down. I, I want to get all the facts before uh, we do anything but contain them. Uh, we have not sufficient forces here to form an attack party and at the same time to maintain adequate coverage. Now, uh, I want you to get all the off-duty guards back here immediately. Get the wives and children off the island. Owen Miller, bring me the Bureau Manual on Escape Containment Procedures. Good job, Bernie. You keep bringing them guys like that and we'll be able to prance right on out of here. Okay. 
We can still make a deal with these men. No, 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 no. What, what we should do? What we should do is just kill them. Go and kill them all! Right, sir. Corey! If you try to shoot it out, you don't have a chance. I'll throw your lives away. Shut up, you lousy screws! He beat on me when I tried to burn myself! You sure they're gonna kill us, Captain? Joe, you hear the sirens, you know what that means. By now, there's a double ring of guns around this prison. What can you do with a pistol? No, we could do it, Joe. Joe, we could hold them off. Don't listen to that screwball. Think. Joe, think. I'm thinking, Captain. Oh, I'm thinking. <laughs> and I'm thinking there's going to be a lot more dead today than just us. Come on, Joe, shoot him. Come on, Joe, kill him. Kill them all. Don't hurt him, Joe. They didn't give us no trouble. Tell them don't want to kill every damn screw in there. We don't want no witnesses now. They're only going to put us all in the gas chamber. Go ahead, kill him, Joe. Kill him. We don't need hostages, do we? I don't know. A deal is always possible, as long as we got something to bargain with. They're pretty good guys, Joe. Why kill him? Give me the iron. Let's show you how easy it is to kill him. Go ahead, kill him, Joe. You sank our boat. And you went and hid that Go damn kill key. Him. Kill him, Joe. Go ahead. Why not? Maybe your goons are going to come in and kill us. So what's new? Only you're not going to be around here to see it. Yeah, kill him. Go ahead, kill him, too. Now, Joe, kill that man. Go ahead, Joe, shoot. Joe. All right. up the score. Now we better go get ready for the other ghouls who are going to come visit us. Oh, are they going to kill us? Oh, they're going to get us now. I got to find myself a place to, place to hide. <laughs> the poor lunatic. <laughs> he really thinks there's a place to go and hide. Well, if there is, we better go and find it. Come on, up the hill on the double! Now get out of here as soon as you get the women and children on board. Now we'll go back to D. We can see what's going on by looking through the window. <laughs> Don't waste any more bullets. Here. You cut their throats, huh? Where are we going? We ain't going no place, kid. Except maybe to hell. And we're gonna take as many of them with us as we can. That's suicide. Call it what you want. That's all there is. You finish them off, and you'll find us in deep block. help it. Here. It's just 
Everything's gone crazy. I remember Coy was wearing an officer's uniform when he shot at me. Go on. All right. Let's go back. Well, looks like they're all dead. Them last bullets must put an end to them. Without a weapon, what can I do? Well, I'm going all the way with this. Yeah, me too. Okay. But we'll save some bullets for ourselves in case we need them. Looks like the only thing left for me to do is go to my cell. All right, old engine. I left your cell door unlocked. Good luck. Hey, Joe. Look, I'm sorry it turned out this way. We didn't give them a hell of a run in the woods. D-block is catching a whole lot of hell. Them stupid screws must think we're still holed up over there. Well, let's get out of this alley while it's quiet over there. How about the kitchen, Marv? Well, it's a whole lot better than here. And we got plenty of, of food and hot coffee. And a lot of good places to hide. The coffee and sandwiches. <laughs> to surrender. They want us dead. Well, we got to get the hell out of here. I'm going to the top of the cell block. have the yard under full control. Good, good. Uh, is the assault team ready? Yes, sir, some of our best men. Now, do you think that you can get our men out of there without any further casualties? Yes, sir. There'll be 12 of us and we'll get good coverage from the gun galleries. Then proceed. Let's go! Move it up!
Over here. 402. Miller's hurt real bad. We can use his blanket as a stretcher. Get a hold of Miller. He's, he's in bad shape. Some of them hex you shot are still alive. That dumb Indian didn't finish him off like we told him to. The kid double crossed us. Sounds like some of those screws weren't even hit. Hey, the kid said they were dead. Why would he lie? <laughs> He's the one who's got to worry about witnesses, not us. I'm in or out. The armed group is apparently held up in the utility corridor between the cells. We'll have to blast them out. C-block cutoff. So we'll continue to drop explosives on the cutoff floor, bringing them in from the yard, and while these operations are proceeding, uh, keep up steady attack at both ends of the utility corridor so that the men in there can't make any moves.
okay. Let him come. I want just one more before I die. chance to surrender. Warden Johnson's guaranteed you safe conduct. It's your only chance. That's the only way you'll get out of there alive. Coy! Kretzer! This is your last chance. Answer me if you hear my voice and come out of there with your hands up. Kretzer and Coy have been dead a while. But, uh, looks like Hubbard caught the last fuselage. His body's still warm. Two of our officers are dead. Shut up, damn it. Nobody knows what they'll do. We didn't kill anybody. Did we, Joe? We went along with some people who did. It's all the same. It ain't the same. We didn't have no guns. We went back to ourselves. And what about Lagasson? He even testified you refused to hurt anybody. He practically pinned a medal on you. It don't make no difference. We took part. Okay, let's go. The jury's back. They're gonna gas us. That's what they're gonna do. They're gonna gas us. That's what they're gonna do. You have been found guilty of murder. Conspiracy to commit murder while attempting to escape. It is the judgment of this court that you, Samuel Richard Shockley, and you, Myron Edgar Thompson, be taken to San Quentin to await execution in the gas chamber 
on December 2nd, 1948. It is the further judgment that you, Clarence Carnes, be returned to Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary to complete your previous sentence of 99 years and to then be incarcerated for the remainder of your life. It is only the evidence that you were an unwilling participant in the violence of the attempted escape and your age that have saved your life, Carnes. It must now be devoted to repayment of your debt to society. Stay here until the day you die. Open up 39. Opening 39. Hey, kid. What'd you get? Another lifetime. Well, at least you're alive to serve it. I don't think you're right about Nietzsche. He was a nut. 
Knight the King Bishop III. You got to look at the man's work apart from the man himself. Yeah. Do as I say, not do as I do, huh? That's right. Baloney. I can't have any respect for a man that meets a woman once and asks her how she'd like to be married to the greatest writer on earth. That's what Nietzsche did. That's what any nut would do. You'd say the same thing, Stroud, about Van Gogh and still respect him as a painter. His paintings aren't a reflection of the ear he cut off and sent to some woman. That's entirely different. The man suffered a momentary attack of madness, passion. So he cut off his ear and sent it to a lady. I'd have done the same thing if I thought it was going to do me any good. <laughs> you funny enough looking as it is, old man. Shut up, Benny, and play chess. Pawn to Queen Bishop IV. I think we got mice. I don't know about that. I think there are a few rats in this joint. I haven't seen many mice. Well, somebody's eating my bishop. Maybe it's one of the screws. Here. Make yourself another piece. Thanks, I'll get it back to you. Let me go. Oh, yeah. Hey, you hit me first. I was just trying to protect myself. Let me go. What's going on? I know they're looking to second rate bunch of cars in this joint these days. I said shut up. Who is it? I don't know, and I don't care. I just wish he'd shut up. Give me that constitutional right. You got no rights at all, and if you get any, I'll let you know. Get back to the game. No, let's forget it for today. What's about it? I don't know. A move. Get a pass. I've been studying Rachevsky. I was going to beat you anyhow. The hell you were. You don't know any more about chess than you do Nietzsche.
morning counts, sir. Mm hmm. Everything quiet? Yes, sir. Stanfield, I've been uh, going over the records of the men in lockup. Well, I don't understand something. Perhaps you can explain. Robert Stroud has been in lockup for 27 years. Why? Well, sir, he killed a guard. I know that. When President Wilson commuted that death sentence, it was only on condition that Stroud be kept in lockup the rest of his life. That's illegal. He could have broken that with a writ from any one of the jailhouse lawyers here. Yes, sir. But he doesn't want to get out, sir. He said he just can't stand the tension of being back in population. Uh, he has his books and his writing about birds. And that's all he wants. What about the man next to him, um, Carnes? He's been in there seven years. He was involved in the big break of 46. You know, guards were killed then, too. Stanfield, you're telling me things I already know. Now, what I don't know is, why is he still there? Nothing was said about his spending the rest of his life in lockup, was there? I believe that was a decision of former associate warden Miller. You know, Carnes came here with a record of trying to escape every jail he was ever in. Yeah, well, I'm taking him out of there and I'm putting him back in population. I want every member of the guard staff to know he's to be kept under special security watch at all times. Hey, Birdman, what are you doing? Pressing my tuxedo. Having dinner with a new warden, care to join us? One of these days they're gonna carry you out of here in a wet sheet. <laughs> Probably. You want a drink? No, no thanks, I'm studying. You go ahead. Before the screws, smell it. Right. Yeah. You know something, Bob? I haven't figured out a way how to get out of here without hurting anything except some of the furniture. Now I know you're drunk. Why'd you sack out, Joe? Have a pleasant drink. Have one for me. No. I think I'm going to dinner. Shut up, will you, Joe? You've been on the hole 42 times in the last seven years. Just keep calm. Cons, this place smells like a football locker room. Get your soul cleaned up. You know something? When God was passing out brains, you must have still been in the nose line. Cons, oh, oh. you're going to the hole. Okay. 
Big bows, huh? <laughs> the hell was that Indian smiling about? Who knows? They're all crazy. They're nuts. Mustard or mayonnaise? Both. Okay. Give me about an hour. I ain't got nothing but time. Say, hey, Mr. Ransom, can I go to the kitchen? Brubaker barred my dustpan yesterday and I gotta get it back. Maybe he, uh, stole it. Sure. This place is a den of thieves. Come on. Hey, JC, you ready? Service sure ain't getting no better in here. Paint the radiators now? It's been okay for four years. This is a big place for one painter. I asked for help. Guys with experience keep getting thrown in the hole. All right, go ahead. You, you couldn't do anything about these walls, could you? No, sir. Not until the order comes up. I think you ordered that only two years ago. Let's paint the radiators. This is your new man, Mr. Dankworth, Clarence Carnes. Sure, sure. My best customer. 15,000 books since you've been here. Well, you, you certainly know what's here. You can take over for Farley distributing the books. What's Farley going to do? Well, I was able to uh, sign him out of here about a week ago. Uh, Ray? Yo. Show Carnes how our system works. Come on. I guess you know how the rules work. Six books max for each con, two weeks each. Nobody pays much attention. 
Uh, Fats and Denny will take the cards every morning, make up the stacks for you. I sort the magazines. You take them out, bring them back. We'll put the returns back on the shelves. Magazines get priority. You do one of those guys' magazine one day late, and they'd like to go through the roof. I bet they wish they could. Won't you check over them stacks Fats and Denny put together? You got to. Frankly, I don't think either of them can read. I don't know what the hell they're doing in the library. I'm Walt Stummer, UJC. You really read all the books in this joint? You got good ears. I hear what I need to hear. Going around with this, I hear everything that goes on in this joint. Among other things, I hear that you're one smart Indian. Stomer? Stomer, you finished with that radiator yet? No, sir, not yet. Well, get a move on. Yes, sir. I was just asking Carnes here if he had any experience painting. Uh, Carnes already has a job, and it doesn't include painting. Yes, sir, you're right. Didn't mean to get you in hot water, pal. See in the yard when the old goat's on around. You know, I don't know what's gotten into the warden. Finally sending me somebody who knows a little bit about books. And hey, look, they move Carnes here from industries to this job to keep him out in the open. Where they can keep an eye on him, constantly. Great. I like time. Uh, Your name Collins? Mm-hmm. I'm Mickey Cohen. It's good to meet you. Nice to see you around. I'm from L.A. Where are you from? I got to be going. I'll see you around. How's it going, man? Come on, partner. Maybe you ought to sit there. You're really watching me. Well, I care. We work together. Yeah, we're in the same fraternity house. Sure tail. Cons! All right. I suppose you want me to take just the gray ones out, huh? Hey, come on. We got time for another game. Let's see, that's 43 pack of cigarettes you owe me. We just play for the hell of it. I ain't never done nothing in my life just for the hell of it. When we had trouble up in Harlem. We'd have a meeting in a hotel room. Maybe the Teresa up on 125th Street. Talked about it, made a plan. We walked out of that room, that man was as good as dead. Nobody ever got burned for it. This ain't the Teresa Hotel. No. And I used to drive a Cadillac. Yeah, man, a Cadillac. With two beautiful women in it all the time. <laughs> Move. Makes you so sure the Indian knows something the rest of us haven't hit on. I can tell. He's solid. He thinks. He's not just thinking about all them books he read, either. That don't mean he's thought of a way on. You want to bet next month's cigarettes on it? How you doing, Joe? All right. You know the Anglin brothers and Frank Morris, don't you? I've seen them around. 
We want to go out of here together, Joe. You and 270 other guys. They may want to. We're going. It's been tried. I want you to come with us. Why? You're solid. You're smart. I don't know three guys in this joint who don't like you or who would rat on you. There's people like Stinky Davis that rat on anybody. And he's only six cells down from you. <laughs> See, you know things like that. Where everybody and everything is around here. Not even the niggers would throw you a curve. Not with you playing chess with Bumpy Johnson every day. The screws watch me like a hawk. Hey, old man. Your stuff from the Ornithological Society come in. Good. I need it. I need advice. Most Indians do. Some guys want me to go with them on a break. Good. You said you had it all figured. Why waste it? Because if we miss, I'll be right back here. I don't think I could take it again. Why worry about it, Indian? They might just send you to the gas chamber. Solve all your problems. the work. Hey, J.C., what's up? This year, Christmas Carol. We only got one copy of it and 23 requests for it. Yeah, happens every holiday. What are you going to do about it? Well, I was thinking of throwing these names in a hat and having a row. I got an idea. Why don't you take the book and throw it in the garbage? End the problem for good. Well, Merry Christmas, Joe. Merry Christmas to you too, Ray. Merry Christmas, Walt. Thanks, Charlie. Merry Christmas, Stan. Yeah, Charlie. Merry Christmas, Charlie. You. Here you go, Joe. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Charlie. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Okay, jingle bells. Dashing. Dashing, Dashing through the snow. In a white horse up, up in sleigh. sleigh. Real loud.
What are you doing, painting the wall? Just did, Mr. Dankworth. Maybe I'm working too fast. You want me to go and shovel it to the back of the stack? No, 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 no. I'm sick of looking at that chip paint. Probation meeting with an associate warden. Make up your mind? Mm-hmm. I'll come in. But I want you to know they're watching me. Hard. Don't bother me, Joe, if you can handle it. I ain't coming in as a pack mule for you and Frank Morris and Anglins. What do you want? I've been there before. Unless I make it this time, there ain't nothing for me except the gas chamber or life in lockup like Stroud. I want to call the shots. Why? Because I know how to get out of this escape-proof rat hole. If we make it, they'll close this place down. Yeah, they will. It's okay with me. I'll have to check with Frank and the Anglin boys. I'm gonna go over to industry and see Frank. Tell Dankworth I'll finish this tomorrow. Don't get involved in it, Ray. You'll be out of here in three, four years. Clean slate. You don't screw up. This is all or nothing for a few guys who really ain't got nothing. You're right, Joe. Thanks. Sorry. Sergey, I gotta get more paint for a job in the library. Okay. Mr. Fergie! Mr. Fergie, machine is jammed. Carnes is in, but he wants to run it. Why? To get away out of here while he was spending seven years in lockup. Joe's a smart guy, but the last smart guys in here can't crack Alcatraz. I want to know his plan first. I'll tell him. Ah, yeah. Thanks, Mr. Fergain. A lot of work now. I'll be careful. Fergain, I got what I need. All right. Nerve vent at the back of the cell. Dig out the concrete around it and make a door. That gives us access through the utility corridor to the ceiling of the cell block. We can work up there. There's two ventilators in the roof. Now the bars are toolproof and welded into a steel ring. But that ring. That ring is held by bolts set in concrete. Those bolts are soft. You cut through them, and the whole thing will drop out. There's a Baker exhaust pipe at the west end of the wall. It goes from the roof to the ground. That guard tower, there's nobody in it after the light's out. And it's just over the fence and down to the water. How do you know all that, Joe? I get around. We'll all get around now. JC is in. You know, your hair's starting to fall out, Frank. Uh, got to get a special course of treatments. Shut up, Anglin. Stop getting me in trouble with the authorities, Morris. Save hair. There's a star drill hidden in the shop. It's been there 11 years. We gotta buy it. It'll cut through concrete like paper.
Do you want to search me? Go on, get out of here. He's got three bullets in his back, put there by the Detroit Police Department. The slug set off the alarm every time, and they only frisk him every once in a while. One of these times, he's going through with a star drill. ashes from you. You've been saving that stuff for three years. It still ain't convinced me crazy enough to get out of here. Might as well put it to good use. I'll give you 15 packs of cigarettes. Lots of it. Cigarette ashes and toilet paper dry to look like concrete, but you're gonna have to repaint the wall after every time. What about the smell? Liniment all. It'll cover up everything. Here's Gondo. Tell Baggett to sharpen it. Yes, sir. Sharpen this? Says who? Says Mr. Fairgate. Mr. Fairgate? When's he gonna learn to operate that thing? Why do I have to keep sharpening this? Just sharpen it. Come on, keep moving. slide for. I dump a pound of concrete just for Frank Morris. Yeah, well, the next time, dump it over the second base. This is where I'm dumping mine.
You want to watch? How you doing, Joe? Not good. They're watching me so close I can't even go to the toilet without company. I'm gonna bring the star drill to you this afternoon in the library. Don't. I think they're gonna roust me. I'm gonna need hacksaw blades in about a week. You'll have to wait. I can't get nothing out of the shop right now. You don't have to, Joe. They're in your cell. They've been there eight or ten years since Doc Parker got shot down trying to escape. My cell? I'm going up to my cell. Ready, Star? Just about. Let's go then. Sure, sure. All right, Carnes, move it. Get up there fast. Opening 201 and 207. All right, Stomer, come on. Let's get to your cell. Go on. Hey, I left my cigarettes in the utility corridor. That's too bad. Get to your cell. I'll go nuts if I don't have smoke. Then go nuts. Get to your cell or you're on report. All right, Stormer, move it. Closing Exercise is very important for a young man. I used to give me a lot of exercise when I was young. Thought you used to drive a Cadillac. Yeah. A lot of folks been getting exercise around here lately after lights out. If there anything goes on around this place, don't get back to you. Not if it's worth knowing about. What if it's worth keeping quiet about? Well, what's in it for me? 
One day I teach you how to play chess. <laughs> well, don't worry about it. Getting out of here can be done. It ain't easy, but it can be done. It won't do you no good if you ain't got no help from the outside. You got any help from the outside? There's Morris, or Stormer, or the Anglins. How many people around here know that much? Probably nobody. I also know what's going on on my old turf. See, that's the one thing I got going for me. Ain't nobody else around here got. New con comes in. I find out what's going on. When I'm goes out of here, he carries my instructions. My people in Harlem stay in the same groove I cut for them. You know something, Bumpy? Somebody wants to get out of here. Really prove that it could be done. The one escape-proof prison in the United States. They'd have to close this place down. For good. There wouldn't be no more Alcatraz. Check. I told you I'd teach you how to play this game. You keep that up, you gonna bring it down to 207 packs of cigarettes, you owe me. And we better keep going, then. I just want to finish this up. Tomorrow. You're finished. I've added up these figures six times and it still comes out the same. We're missing 15 raincoats. Don't be an idiot. It's just a stupid mistake. One or two raincoats, maybe, but nobody steals 15 raincoats. Where would they go with them? Who's on top of the cell house? Stomer, what the hell are you doing? Spring cleaning, Lieutenant. It really gets dirty up here. You're getting dirt all over the main cell house. Don't worry, Lieutenant. I'll clean it up. You can't throw dirt all over the cell house. Well, I can't paint over it. And I got the warden's orders to. <laughs> 
clean and paint. You know, maybe I could hang up some old blankets around the sides to catch the dirt. Call the laundry. Have them send a blanket up here. Uh, maybe uh, two or three to do the job right, huh? Oh, come on, come on, wait a minute, what is this, what is this, the city dump here? Come on, I need the little space I got. The associate warden decides what's more crowded, your office or his, Vernon. All right, let's go, let's yes, go. Yes, sir. Here you go, Vernon. And all six of them. On top is Don Quixote. He moved two big filing cabinets into my projection room yesterday. Cervantes wrote it while he was in prison. And filled with the associate warden's files. Took him ten years to write it. The biggest one is about you. I don't think you'd be able to read all of them in two weeks. They've got every minute of your time since the 46 blast out down cold. Here's Moby Dick and Gulliver's Travels. Everybody you ever talk to is on that list. Bumpy Johnson. Guys in the library. Yeah, maybe me too now. Joey. They got pictures of stuff you got stashed in your cell. Lamp, stuff like that, you know. They've been checking your cell while you was away. Much obliged. floor or any of these railings after this. No, sir, there won't be. You hear that? The lieutenant wants this whole place spotless. You understand? Yes, sir. It'll shine like a pair of patent leather shoes. It's this Joey now, huh? Yeah. That's the way. Oh, how you doing? What happened? He's ducking. See, Joe? Love it. How about a game? Yeah? Let's get in. Let's go up top. Go pick up the mail.
Guess you want to lose some more cigarettes. I think I'm going to win a few from you today. Can't pull out now. He's the only one who can make it work. What do you want to do? Complain to the warden that clients refuse to escape? Got to get to him. Muslims want to have a meeting with you. Huh? What do they want? They want to talk about the break that's going down. I don't know nothing about it. Look here. You tell them they ain't got nothing to say about it to nobody either. No chess today? Don't feel like chess. You owe me too many packs of cigarettes. Well, didn't Shorty pay you? No, I ain't gonna take cigarettes from Shorty. You know, if you started smoking, you'd have a reason for winning. You get in prison happens, Joe. What do you mean by that? Look at these guys. Just look at them. Most of them are already turned into zombies. They don't even want to get out. If they was to get out, they'd just do something stupid to get themselves put right back in here. They fall in the habit of seeing the same faces every day. Doing the same thing every day. They can't handle nothing else. They get scared. They get to thinking if they was to get out, they wouldn't know how to act. Well, maybe they're right. But I'll tell you one thing. If a man don't want to get out of here. If he ain't thinking about it in some way every day, he might as well be dead. What if they're watching you so close that you haven't got any choice? As long as you're alive, you got a choice. Well, I got to see can I find me a sucker to win back some of these cigarettes I owe you. on your case. I'm sorry it took me so long. I have an important writ to prepare for Jerry Coleman. I think I can get him a reversal on five out of the six weapons charges. He'll walk for sure if I do. That's great for Jerry. What about me? It's different with you, Joe. The law is very clear about someone involved in a felony in which a murder is committed. The way the law looks at it, you're as responsible for the deaths of those guards in 46 as the men who pulled the trigger. As well as the deaths of the three convicts who were killed in the breakout. That's it, huh? That's it, pal. I guess I won't be walking out of here with one of your writs, Courtney. No. But if it's any consolation, neither will I. You're a smart man, Courtney. A lot better lawyer than any of them six or eight guys in here with law degrees. Sure. Why do you keep coming back? Why don't you do something else besides write bad checks? <laughs> it's very simple, Joe. I live like a king out there. I can turn over more than a million dollars in a year or two before they catch up with me. I spend every damn cent of it on myself. And the thing that makes all those pleasures twice as sweet is that I'm free, and I know they're chasing me while I'm having such a wonderful time. That's the most exciting thing in the world, Joe, to be free and on the run. You were such a kid when you came in here. Do you remember what it's like to be free? Let's put these in the uh, card catalog. Hey, 
Now you know how to get the right color. Gotta have an eye for it, Joe. Forget about my little problem. When you decide how much to use, you gotta go all the way with it. That's what I mean. All the way. I think you got it straight now, Joe. I'm supposed to paint the warden's door. The uh, glass is cracked. When are you going to replace it? This is it right here. It's going in this afternoon. Should I paint it this afternoon or wait till tomorrow? Well, you better wait until tomorrow. Somebody has to cut a stencil with lettering for the door first. That hasn't been done yet? No. Well, maybe I'll just wait till you guys get everything together. Thanks a lot. See you looking better. You've been walking around like a black cloud for the last week. Don't take nothing special to feel lousy in this joint. Sure, Joe. Did you ever find that flesh colored paint? Thought you said you didn't want it. I do now. Boy, you ought to take up gardening for your nerves.
finish the book on rose guarding, Joe. You have it back tomorrow. That was fast. I drilled around the grate just enough to loosen it so I can kick it out. Are you ready for spring planning? Almost ready. There's a few more things to do. Now it's your turn. Okay. I'll pick it up. hard and steel will never get through that. But the bolts are soft, just like Joe said. I'll cut them just to the point where they're about to go through, then we'll finish it up the night we go. I take the whole thing out instead of trying to go through. Okay, I got one more done. Let's get back. I'll be sure to read it.
What are those blankets doing up there? Well, the top of the cell block's being cleaned and painted. They were put up to keep the dust from covering everything down here. Get them down from there. I don't think Stomer's finished yet. I don't care if he's finished or not. Get those blankets down from there. <laughs> what are you laughing about, Carnes? <laughs> well, I know it ain't none of my business, Lieutenant. But you sure know how to get the warden's go. He ordered them blankets up there to keep the cell block clean of dust and paint drippings. Tell Lieutenant Wade I recommend to get whatever authorization is necessary to get those blankets removed. Yes, sir. Lieutenant Wade's in the library. I'm going over there. I'll tell him if you want. Sure, Carnes. Got a message from Mr. Sokin. Lieutenant Holmby just come in the cell house. He wants them blankets up there removed. Holmby? Yes. Sokin? Yeah. Yeah, Carr just told me. No, you are not. In fact, you have my specific orders to leave those blankets up. So you think he is giving orders in the cell house? I'm in charge here. He's supposed to be running the industry section. Hey, Stomer. Yes, Mr. Sulk. There was some commotion over those blankets of yours. Yeah? What's the problem? No problem. Just somebody wanted to take the blankets down. You better finish that job soon before somebody else complains about them. Yeah. Open cell 207. Out, Carnes. Move it. Strip. Put your clothes right there on the floor. Every inch. Don't skip anything. Cell cards. Close two oh seven.
Yeah. I guess I'd do the same thing if I was you. But you're not going to make it. What are you talking about? The chances of hitting the mainland without getting picked up are about zero. Then what the hell? That was the rest of the plan. The only way to succeed is by making contact with help before you hit land. I want to shut down this lousy joint. I'll get you some help. Bumpy. Huh? How'd you like to square things on them cigarettes you owe me? I don't know, kid. I kind of like things the way they are. I'd miss owing you. I need help. Big help. Yes. You told me once nobody could get out of here without outside help. You were right. Yeah, I kind of like to see you 86 this place, Joe. Something could be arranged. Not me. The other four. Mm. As long as anybody remember what happened back in 1946, they're not going to turn their backs on you for too long. I'd like to see him make it. Yeah, I guess I would, too. Tell you what. I'll work things out. If everything goes smooth, you owe me a hundred packs. Huh? This may be the biggest deal ever made now, <laughs> Contreras. <laughs> Let's play chess. <laughs> Good luck. We could let you know we made it. I'd give a hundred dollars for a seat on the 50-yard line of this one. If you don't hear the siren till morning, you'll know we made it.
leave the roof vent open. See if we can make it. Yeah. over to the vet while I work on it. This is Duffy. I thought I heard something. It sounded metallic. Somewhere up near the top of the cell house. Hello. Barwin, I want you up to the wall tower and have a look. Duffy heard a noise. Probably nothing, but I want it checked. Okay.
I want you to keep the tower manned until the morning shift comes on. I don't want to take any chances. Okay.
say, Bumpy. Uh, I said you owe me a hundred packs of smokes. That's what I say. Well, we better get at it. If that's that bad, I got to whoop you before they close this damn place down. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.